The Old Gold Club. Powered by Wolverhampton Building Supplies. With Mikey Burrows and Chris Ivalumo. Welcome along to the Old Gold Club by Mikey Burrows, alongside me, Chris Awellamo, and our guest this week spent six years at Molyneux, making 105 appearances, scoring four goals, possibly five, we'll get to that, winning two promotions and a whole lot of hearts. He's the man who had a catchy song and who Mick McCarthy liked to refer to as his body double, it can be the one and only George Ellicobie. Thank Welcome to the much, Old Mikey. Gold Club. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. It's been brilliant. I mean, we've already done quite a bit for our podcast, by the way, and it's been fascinating talking. And the, <clears throat> all the things that kind of made fans love you have been coming out already. That intensity, that fire that's in there. That was. I mean, you were in the dressing room with him. How bit, was he as big a character as we all thought he was? No, he was, <clears throat> and uh, and everyone knew it. I remember uh, one of the games, you were, you were injured, George, and yeah. uh, Mick McCarthy asked you to take the team top before the match. Do you remember yeah. that? Yeah, I remember that. And uh, I'm trying to remember what the game... You want, you, Doncaster. There you go. Yeah. And uh, you've came in. Oh, that was before the Christmas do as well, wasn't it? I'm thinking no, Doncaster. Think no, it was the last last game of the last he, game of the season. He's came in and uh, he's gave the, the team talk. And you know what? <laughs> That's the old every all the players they loved him they listened to him, uh, and he is he's so passionate, but again, that intensity he gave you the look, he, the, yeah. the demands on you. But we put the, those demands on ourselves. It's about the well, group as 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 a, the, as a collective was was excellent. Bearing in mind that we are on Facebook and YouTube, right? Can you tell us some of the stuff that you would have said at the time? Um. Well, I'll, I'll add on to what Chris has just said. Um, you know, going out there, going out there every single day, going out to, to train with, with Chris and the, the rest of the lads, which was a great bunch. I knew what was expected of us. You know, there's pressure, which is good pressure. And the truth is, if someone wasn't doing it right, I'll pull them, I'll tell them how, we, how, how it, should be, it should be told in the right way to up their game. Because we ain't here to play any games. We was here to get results. And there wasn't any time to, to mess around. Not that any of the boys took it for granted. But, you know, if things weren't quite right. Which, it's happened a few times where I've, you know, popped up in front of, you know, some cars, some big characters and, you know, pulled them to one side. And we've had words. It was accepted back then. I don't know if it's accepted now. <laughs> but then, yeah, we've had words. And I've told them, listen, you don't come here and think, you know, you're going to come here and just be a passerby. You're a passenger of this golden palace. So <clears throat> you best make sure you, you best make sure you, you turn up every single day and give 100% for this football club. But yeah, um, going back now to what the team talk, um, yeah. Yeah, Mick, Mick did ask if anyone wanted to take, take the team talk on the, on the day. And I thought no one wanted, wanted it anyways because they didn't want to be the gaffer on the day. I thought, yeah. yeah. All the time to to get my to get all the time to get myself into the dark side like this like they say um, when I say yeah I wanted to do it and um, honestly you know I've got great respect for the boys and I just when it was time for me to to deliver the team talk I said something in between the lines of you know I know we've just I think it was the very last game of the season and we've just won we've beaten QPR the the week before. But we've not been crowned champions yet. Yeah. So there was still championship title to be to be played out there. And I said to the boys, listen, I know everyone, the fans are partying because we've gotten promoted into into the premiership. And it's amazing to have them being in the party mode, but there's no time for partying now. It's time for us to go out there and finish the job because there's still three points to be played for. And um I haven't said that, and I said, but most importantly, the boys need to look after themselves because Doncaster had nothing to play for at the time, no disrespect to them, but we got something to play for. And it wasn't going to be good going into the game or after the game, one or two of us is injured long term, and these boys, they've all worked, the boys have all worked extremely hard throughout the season to make sure they get this fantastic football club into the Premier League. And we want to see any lad missing, missing, missing the start of the, the coming season by by being injured. And 
I just said we need to do it properly. We do it the Wolves way like we've done throughout the season <clears throat> and make sure we get the three points and then after we get the three points, it's time to party. So that's some of the lines were well said. Um, I, 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 you know, I, we, we spoke about when I first met you when, I, when we, we played at Colchester together for a couple of years. Uh, the Wolves come in for you. Now it's a completely different club from Colchester. Yeah. You were in out the team at Colchester, but yep. you, you, you knew there was potential there. Everyone's seen exactly what you're about. Yeah. For me, I, I applaud you for coming to Wolves because then you believe in yourself, you know yeah. what you're about, but it's a big decision because for any football, the most important thing is to play. Yeah. So you're thinking there and you come and you, I think it was 15 appearances in the in the first season here. So yeah. what what's going through your head when Wolves come in? Of course you're thinking, great club, great history. What's yeah. actually going through your head when, when there's interest? Um, if I'm being totally honest, I didn't know if there was 100% interest in me. And um, the day when I found out that there was interest, we've traveled to Barnsley away and I was the only one that did not get on the bench. So I was sat with the Colchester fans and we got, I remember we got back home um, at about 3, 4 a.m. in the morning because it was 7.45 p.m. Mm. kickoff. And we, Colchester had a reserve game at Chelsea's training ground the following day at 12 p.m. kickoff. And I asked to play in that game because I hadn't played. So I traveled to to the training ground at Chelsea, played 90 minutes there. And then finally, I, after the game, I looked at, looked at my phone and I've seen a message come through from, from, from my agent saying there's discussions going on, concrete discussions going on between Wolves and Colchester. That's when I started thinking more about it. Coming now to the question you've just asked me, what was going through my mind? There was only one thing I saw improving my career improving myself as a player i know the history of then i didn't know the history of wolves but from an outside perspective i knew wolves was a massive massive club mm. under the the, the 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 leadership of mick mccarthy the gaffer at the time you know and i was like this, there was only one place for me no disrespect to Colchester at the time i just needed to come to wolves to improve no disrespect to the players at Colchester. I just thought I had a better chance of improving as a player at Wolves or with Wolves. I'd done everything I needed to do with Colchester at the time. And I thought, all right, a change here might give me a better opportunity to make that decision. It wasn't the easiest decision ever. It was, it was very hard for me. And I thought about it. I, I, was, I asked myself a million questions. What if I make this move? And I'm not up to the wool standards. But again, you know, I've never been shy of hard work before. I, I knew this was, was going to be very hard for me. Because you, you didn't have it easy. I mean, no. Looms was talking to me the other day about the fact, you know, <clears throat> people forget that it was, what, four games into the promotion season? Uh, Ipswich away, wasn't it? Yeah, Ipswich away. And yeah. you suffer a very serious injury and you have yeah. to sit out for an awful long time. Yeah. And, and mentally, because you've been through this, that must yeah. have been really hard. It was tough. It was tough because I had one of the best pre-seasons ever I've had in my entire career going into the season. Started very well. I started well. very well as well that season. And for that to happen at Ipswich, I thought I knew straight away that this was going to be a long-term injury because of how it happened, the pain I felt, and everything after that. And then, obviously, the MRI scan and everything proved, proved that. But these are the darkest days of a footballer's career when something like that happened. Because you're looking at it and you're thinking, oh, I want to be part of the special moments here because I knew we was going to do something special that season. 100% I knew it in How did you know? because How? because of the healthy competition we had <coughs> in the squad and the additions we've had we just you know signed signed the big man um, Chris we just signed him and with the other additions we've had within the squad I'd actually played with them half a season yeah. having signed from Colchester to to Wolves so I knew what the potentials were I knew we was going to go places and I've 
I, I was vying to be part of that and there was no stopping me. So when that injury happened, I always say this, I've got this, it's my term, I use it, a positive code. So I code my, my body, I code my mind, I code my, my, myself with positivity. So when once I do that, whatever it don't matter whatever happens on the on the outside it's not touching me on the inside i'm focused i stay focused i'm making sure there's only one outcome positive in the end because in that season obviously you picked up looms a, a pretty serious injury as well and you have to go into a, a treatment room that's probably dominated by him wasn't it <laughs> i think he dominates every situation doesn't he but uh, it's, it's quite interesting that he says that because you know that when someone does go through an injury and even then okay it was coming towards the end of that season Mikey when I when I well, dislocated my knee and that was my season done and then I broke my foot the next in the summer a mm. few few months later uh, I, I found that difficult and I'm surprised that he, he said you know what because you wouldn't have known that George was going through a never. difficult time he was never negative he was coming in and you're thinking God, this this guy's out for a long time and he's he's choppy. Yeah. It killed me every day coming in and you'd chat with the boys, you'd come in early, you you get your physio, your treatment, and then you go into the gym and, and you're watching them. And you're watching them all you're come watching out. Them all come you know, out you're all coming joke, out yeah. with their, their boots on and you're they're, they're chatting and there's a, And they start passing they're, they're, bantering they're having a little bit everything of everything. It's there's nothing like missed. it. There's nothing like it. There is nothing like walking into a group of whatever twenty five to thirty pros in a in a room and the banter that goes on there is no there is no replacement for that and even though I'm still part of that dressing room and you go into the, you're not it's the same as as a striker when you win a game you've not scored you don't have, feel have, not you, the same have you really done your little bit can you enjoy the win the same as the, the other striker that scored no you don't it's because it's it's great for the team but you've not done your little bit so those little things and I'm, I'm yeah. surprised I think that's that shows you the strength of 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 the of the beast right I'm, in front I'm, of us I'm, now. I'm, that, that 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 code. And I'm I'm gonna add something onto that. You know when I suffered that injury, yeah, I asked for the DVD. Do you know how many times I've replayed that particular bit? Just when I suffered the injury, I've played it over a thousand times. Right, you yeah. Why though? I draw, Why would I you want strength, to watch that? Bad? I draw strength off it. I feed off it. It's remarkable though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I feed off it. I, to tell to tell myself, I'll come back from this. I will come back. Because it's not just... You didn't just have to do that once in your career. You had to do that twice. Twice. And I remember exactly you saying that I'd done that twice, yes, when I broke my leg. Chris, when he came in and found out... Oh, when I, no, when I came back from my operation from Bristol... I haven't had the operation, a successful operation. When I came back in, when the physios asked me to start coming back in to start doing a bit of rehabilitation work on the on the ankle, he I remember he Chris actually asked me this question. He told me this. He's like George, if that's me, I'm done. He's like big man. I don't know how you do it every day, and I'll be like, I, and I said to him, big man, I'll be back stronger than ever. I will be back stronger than ever. And I will carry on playing. And I will make sure I become a winner. And I did. Unstoppable. You know, and that's, I think that's why he went on. That's why he, he wasn't just loved by, by the fans, you know, everywhere. The staff around the place because the way that he, he went about his, 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 his everyday life. You know, and you 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 went on, and you, you like you say you made some fantastic appearances for the club, as Mikey said. Yeah. Scored some goals, some that he's gonna question, probably try and get a little reaction. No, no, sure no, 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 no. In fact, like, okay, oh, let's, listen, let's deal with let's it. Let's not even get there. Let's no, no. Let's deal because with you're it. You're gonna get me sweating. Let's de <laughs> let's deal with George it. George is giving the look. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, let's not get there. Let Manchester United. Yes. This is what everyone wants to know because yes, this is the controversy. Right now. Yeah. So you actually had a tremendous record against Manchester United. You scored, I think it was at Old Trafford, wasn't it? Yeah, in the I, call it, I call it my hat trick. 
Yes. You no, know, hat tricks are meant to be scored in one game, but I scored them in, <laughs> I scored a hat trick. I scored a hat trick in two. It's all right. <laughs> so it's Manchester United at Molyneux. Uh, Nani scored. Nani, Nani scored, didn't he? Yes, put, that's right. Put them in front. And then you rise highest in the box to get Wolves level. That's and right. And then there is a free kick, I think, from the right-hand side. Yes. And it's you and Kevin Doyle. No, it was me. <laughs> well, you you take over the story. So in comes yeah, the ball. Right. There was a free kick on the right-hand side, as you just said. I took my position from where I normally attack balls from. You know, there's this instinct. Every player has got an instinct where they think the, more, the ball may land or the ball may be coming into. And I picked a spot. And I can remember Kevin Doyle was standing next to me. And I'm thinking... Doyle, like you need to find a space for yourself, literally, because I got this space. I'm big enough, so I don't need another <laughs> little fellow next to me, right? And it was a great bad thing from, from Elijah's, Nenat. And I've gone, made my move, and got ahead to it. But as soon as I'm getting contact with this ball, who do I see next to me? It was like he was a defender, Kevin Doyle. And I could see the ball coming off my shoulder because I've gone like this to head it and it's come off my shoulder. You can see the size of my shoulder, can you? It's huge. <laughs> Let's be honest. It's, it's, it's massive. It's come off my shoulder into the net and I'm off celebrating. Doyle is off celebrating. I knew 100% I had the last touch in it. I don't know what, what you, have you got a video or do well, we want, uh, can we bring, can we bring, can we bring VAR? And let's, let's have it. I mean, we need to, because this has to be said to one way or the other. We will try and ask, I think we can try and ask the Premier League to see if we've still got the footage. They will have the footage. This. Come on. Because I've, I've seen a video that a fan took right. from the South Bank. And it's, yeah. it's difficult because, I mean, mobile phones, even at that time, like, yeah. weren't amazing as they are now. True. But it, it does look like it's your goal. But <laughs> in the post-match interview... Just say it's my goal and, and well, the, the debate is over. Well, look, look, I'm I'm perfectly willing to give you the goal. <laughs> yeah. But um, in the post-match interview, you actually conceded it and gave it no, to Doyle. Obviously, because the goal has been given to him. And I said, fair enough. There wasn't any video um, analysis to, to analyze who got who, who had the, the, la the last touch of the goal. Bearing in mind, Doyle had been struggling for goals at the time. So I thought, you know what? If he's claiming that it's his goal... I didn't really care at that, at that moment in time. What I cared at that particular moment was the three points. This football club had three points in the back. And we just ended United on beating 29, on beating run 29 games, on beating run in all competition. The little wolves. The question is, uh, yeah. <clears throat> as a defender, he doesn't have no bonus. Doyle had a bonus. Did you get a little slice of that bonus, George? No, never did. <laughs> Well, well yeah, the there's a big question there to ask well, Kevin, yeah. isn't there? Because well, yeah. he, he did say at the time, George See? says in that post-match interview, he's like, I got my goal, you're a striker, I'm think, happy to give it to you. I think, As if you strikers are so you know, temperamental, you needed the help. Now, we spoke to we, we spoke to Jack Price about his position and he never really thought that scoring goals was part of his game. Now, as a defender and as a striker, I think goals should come from all over. Yeah. The pitch in every position now. Is that something that you seen as part of your game? Is that something you thought, right, I'm gonna work on this, work on that? Now I know that you go and you attack the ball better than yeah. than, 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 than most in the game, but it's not really your 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 forte, is it? No, because I'm thinking as a defender, my job is to keep clean sheets. I think of that I think of defending first, keep a clean sheet. Whatever comes after that is a bonus. When I started at this football club, you was with me at Colchester. How many assists I'd, I'd probably gave you from, no, you know? No, yeah. Yeah, I'm saying like going off. That's why we're so I close, George. <laughs> I, wasn't, I, wasn't the, I wasn't the biggest, but let me tell you this now. I was the bravest. I wasn't the biggest, but I was the bravest. So if I'm going up, I know in my head, I'm going up to score a goal. Yeah. I'm going up yeah. to contribute to, to us scoring a goal. So going up, when I started at Wolves, Mick didn't like me going up. And then I was like, one game I just went, nah, Gaffer, I'm going up. I'm going to go up. I was like, I'm one of the best attacking players you've got here in terms of like run, 
timing, everything. I was one of the best. And I knew that within me. And I know if I go up, I don't care who I'm against. If that ball comes into my area, okay. I'm get I'm getting I'm getting so myself a goal. We we're we we're, we've got to move on because we're gonna run out of time. But um we're gonna settle this then. Yeah. So I want you to look at camera two. Yeah. And imagine that's Kevin Doyle. And you tell Kevin Doyle that's your goal. Kevin Doyle, wherever you may be watching from, you know deep down, I got the last touch to that goal. It's my goal. So now I got two goals. And they, they, I, I can guarantee you they're going to take that goal off you. We need, we need, we need VAR. So I'm claiming the goal. It's mine. There, settled. We're that, done. It's good enough right, for me. We can put it to bed. Um, <clears throat> uh, there's loads of stuff, and we're going to talk loads more on the podcast extra, by the way, of stuff that we want to talk about. One of the things that I wanted to really get into um, while we're on the Facebook show is your relationship with Mick and with the fans. Because <laughs> it's a real kind of love story in more ways than one. Like press conferences-wise... There's the famous one after the Blackburn game <laughs> when you interrupt Mick's press conference. That's right. Mick always used to say that you were his body double. Yeah. <laughs> what was it like between the two of you? Well, it was a father-son relationship, I'll tell you that now. Um, from the very first day I walked through the door at Compton, when I shook Mick's hand, I knew I, I had a guidance. I knew I had someone I could look up to, someone I could confine to, I knew he was someone I respected and he was someone I would die for on that football pitch, being it in training or in games. And he saw, he saw in me how I wanted to improve. Him and Terry Connor saw that, the coaching staff, the boys all saw that. I was desperate to improve myself. There were things I knew I wasn't great at, you know, but I, I improved in those, in those areas. I would love to think so. And he was there to make sure I improved. And it was just me being me. Even when I wasn't in, in his starting 11, he knew he could count on me to, to do things right. And I did. Because he knew there was, a, there was a guy or there was a kid he can trust to go out there and train without anyone watching and train and train hard. Yeah, was it hard? Was that hard? I'm just saying, if you're not in his starting 11, the relationship you've got... no. No, no, obviously, fathers and sons do, do disagree from time to time. There were times I knocked on his office. I knew his office. I knew where he was. And I knew he would talk to me. We spoke. We spoke like adults. And there were times I went in and said, Gaffer, I think I, I deserve to be playing in your team. I think I deserve to be, to be playing and helping this football club. Mm -hmm. He may disagree. There were times he disagreed. But I told him, all right, that's fine, Gaffer. But it doesn't change the fact that I'm going to change your decision by working even harder out there. And I left his office just like that. And the next day, I'm at it again in training every single day. So so what about the relationship with the fans? Because there are a lot of people who contacted us to say, you know, they have stories of away games. Like you would be going along the away stand, yeah. shaking hands with fans and engaging with them on a, on a completely different level. Yeah, because I like, I like to think, look at, I always look at myself as a normal, normal person. Take away me playing football for a great <coughs> club like Wolverhampton Wanderers Football, um, Wolverhampton Wanderers football Club. Um, I know where the fans are coming from. You've played, you've played, you've played at bigger stadiums. You've, you've been close to fans. And shaking the fan's hand, that's the satisfaction I'm giving them for paying vast amount of money to, to travel X, Y, Z to come and watch us, to support us through the good, through the bad. They stick with us. So that's my way of paying them back to say, listen, I don't care if we've won. I don't care if we've, I'm not, do, I don't do it when, just only when we've, we've won the game. I do it when we've drawn the game and I do it when we've lost. There are times I've gone to shake people's hands and I've got the, you know, the rejection. It's yeah. all right. You can reject me. You're not going to please every single single person. But then I'm showing the fans that I value your support. I think what George is saying is that we're all human. 
I think no matter what it is we do as a profession and going out there, we don't see ourselves as any different. You know, there's never once when someone's put there and you don't sign an autograph or you don't shake the hand or George just took it to another level. George went out his way to to find that and, and show that he appreciates the, the support Everyone. that he's getting in that. You know, that's, that, that again, testament to the character that he is. You mentioned, though, that sometimes you got rejected. Because yeah. it, it, we've got to be honest, it wasn't always great times, especially no. towards the end of, of your period. You actually yeah. chose to stay when a lot of people left after the double relegation. That's you right. gave it one more year. Yeah. Why was that? And in my opinion, why was that? Because I thought these fans have given so much for this football club. You know, everyone left for their own reasons. You know, I can't, I can't tell you why they left or what happened behind the scenes because I don't, I don't know it, you know. But looking at where we came from, the fans came from premiership, championship, so far the terrible season in the championship. In that championship season, I didn't play for this great club. I tried to, you know, I tried to, but it was out of my hands. Mm -hmm. We had a manager that didn't really fancy me, and I knew that. And there was only one option. I needed to play football games. So I asked to go out on loan. Unfortunately, I went out, I broke my leg. All right. I worked extremely hard. I saw the pain these fans were going through, sitting and watching from the sideline, recovering from the injury I had. And in the end, we got relegated. That's why at Brighton, at the Amex Stadium, when I gave my shirt away, it all dawned onto me that we're heading into League One. But then I decided, you know what? I could have left because I knew there would be additions. I knew there might be, you know, new management coming in. I've just been out with a serious injury. So what are my chances of playing more at this football club? And I decided, I made a decision and said, listen, if the club wants me to stay, I'm staying 100%. And I'm going to be part of the team that takes them back where they belong, into the championship. And then I'll leave after that. So that's my decision and that's why I stayed. So you, you said there about, uh, obviously, relationships and a new start and a new manager coming in staff and very much that's what happened. So yeah. how was that relationship with Kenny Jacket? Because again, yeah, he's an old school manager. Yeah. You tick all the boxes. That's right. You only made nine appearances under him. Definitely. What's what? How, 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 what what's going on there? How, how difficult is that? Because Right. It was very difficult because... I had a I had um I had a conversation with Kenny Jacket the very first day or second day of preseason. And he asked me, honestly, George, where do you want to play? Where do you see yourself playing? What position? And I said, Gaffa, I want to play a center back, a left side center back. He said, You don't fancy playing a left back? I said, No, I've just come back from a serious, you know, ankle injury. I don't think I'll give you the way you want to play. I don't think I'll give you at this moment in time. I'll give you what the up and down. Yeah. I need to get my body right again. Give myself a chance. Then I can think of left back. But I, I was like, my preferred position now is a left side center back. And he nodded to that. Well, when the season started, obviously I knew he said to me, listen, we, we're going to look after you. We're going to manage you right. That was, that was the conversation you will be managed right by us because we know how big your injury was. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I respect that gaffer. And then when the season started, obviously, Wolverhampton, you know, we had great additions to the squad. And the boys, credit to the boys because they were on fire. I'll tell you this now. They were keeping clean sheets after clean sheets. It was difficult. And then the times when I had the chance to, to play, I wasn't at my best. And he heard me to say I wasn't at my best because I, I wasn't playing regular. I tried to play in every single buying closed door or reserve game that was available. I asked to play. Even the ones that Kenny Jacket and his coaching staff said, don't play. I played in. I played in. And I wasn't quite getting the appearances, but credit to the boys that were playing because they were keeping the clean sheets and I was on the bench. 
But there was one thing that never changed my mindset of what I wanted to achieve with the football club. Mm -hmm. I wanted to see this football club promoted. So every day I worked hard and pushed them, the boys that were playing, and pushed them to make sure if the slip up I was in, I was playing. So but that's how you bring success in and around the football club. Um, you certainly did. And we have a lot more that we need to talk about, which will be on our podcast extra, of course, available to download from all the usual places. And on that, we are going to find out for once and for all whether George Kobe was indeed banned from the gym. We will find that out <laughs> on our podcast extra. Thank you for watching. <laughs> The Old Gold Club, powered by Wolverhampton Building Supplies, with Mikey Burrows and Chris Iwalumo.